do you always have a doubt which anticoagulant therapy we have to use in hemodialysis patient do you always have a doubt calculating dose of heparin in dialysis patient hi everyone i am dr yasir from dcdc kidney care our today's topic is anticoagulant therapy in hemodialysis coagulation coagulation is also known as blood clotting it is a complex physiological process that prevent excessive bleeding when vessels are damaged it involves a sequence of steps that leads to formation of blood clot at the site of injury this process is essential to prevent excessive blood loss but need to be careful regularly to avoid the formation of blood clots that can lead to deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism Anticoagulant is a process by which we inhibit blood clotting. It's often necessary during medical procedures like hemodialysis to prevent formation of clots in extracircular circuit or to manage conditions like arterial fibrillation or deep vein thrombosis. Anticoagulant interfere with the various stages of the blood clotting to prevent the formation of fibrins and stabilize the blood clot. However, excessive anticoagulant can lead to bleeding complications also anticoagulant basics anticoagulant in hemodialysis is essential to prevent blood clotting within extracorporeal circuit which include a dialyzer artificial kidney and tubing we use during dialysis process the goal is to maintain the blood flow throughout the circuit and ensure effective removal of waste products and excessive fluids with causing any blood clot formation now we talk about various anticoagulant agent used in hemodialysis first one is unfractionated heparin second is low molecular weight heparin and third one is heparin free dialysis so first of all we will talk about unfractionated heparin unfractionated heparin is commonly used as an anticoagulant agent in hemodialysis it's a medicine that helps to prevent formation of blood clots by inhibiting the activity of certain clotting factors inside the blood the dose of unfractionated heparin in hemodialysis is carefully adjusted based on the patient individual need and response to the treatment the aim is to maintain the adequate level of anticoagulant to prevent clotting in dialysis circuit without causing any excessive bleeding Now we talk about heparin. Heparin is naturally occurring polymeric mixture of sulfate. Myco polysaccharides belongs to the family of glycoaminoglycan. Normally synthesized in the blood by mast cells and basophils. Molecular weight of heparin is 5000 to 30000 dalton. Heparin formation are standardized in terms of international unit IU. Now we talk about the mechanism of action of heparin. Heparin is direct anticoagulant which binds antithrombin 3 and enhances its peptolytic activities. And heparin binds to the enzyme inhibit antithrombin 3 and glycopeptide produced by the liver. The active of AT then inactivate thrombins and other peptidases involving in blood clotting. most probably factor 10a now we talk about anticoagulant techniques heparin loading dose according to the body weight can be 50 to 100 iu per kg hemodialysis patients in patients with low risk of bleeding we can go with routine heparin there are three different types of technique first one is routine heparin second is tight heparin and third one is heparin free dialysis Now we talk about anticoagulant technique with heparin. Routine heparin. In routine heparin, we have to give heparin to the patients by two methods. First one is bolus, like in the starting of dialysis, we give certain amount of dose and continuous infusion that will continue during dialysis. If we talk about bolus injection, the dose will be 30 to 50 IU per body weight. For continuous infusion. the dose will be 80 to 1500 iu or it can be 10 to 15 iu per body weight for example 
If you take a patient of 70 kg for 4 hours of dialysis, the bolus dose will be 30 into 70, 2100 IU and infusion dose will be 800 into 3 hours equal to 2400 international unit. Half-life of heparin is 1 hour. The maintenance dose should be stopped 30 to 60 minutes prior to the termination of hemodialysis. There are some indications for routine heparin technique. For example, if the patient do not have any risk of hemorrhage like CNS bleed, GI bleed or pericarditis. Now we talk about tight heparin. Indication of tight heparin, patient who are having a risk of slight bleeding or we are using heparin free dialysis for this patient but it was unsuccessful due to some clots. Dosage, primary bolus dose will be 750 IU and continuous infusion will be 600 IU per hourly. Now we talk about heparin free dialysis. There are some indications in which we don't use heparin or we do very low dose of heparin or just we use in a circulation. Indications are the patients with having a potent risk of bleeding. Example, hematuria, melina, snake bite before or after surgery or we have to give short duration of dialysis. In these patients, we used 2000 international unit of heparin is given in the circuit and circulated for 10 to 15 minutes before starting the dialysis. And always remember, if you are doing heparin free dialysis, there is always a risk of clotting of circuit. So always remember to flush 100 to 150 ml of normal saline in every 15 to 30 minutes. Now we talk about antidote of heparin. Protamine sulfate is a medication that we use to reverse the side effect of heparin. It's specially used in heparin overdose. Dose of protamine sulfate will be 1 mg per 100 unit of heparin. Always contact your physician or nephrologist in case you have to give protamine sulfate. Give it very slowly over 10 to 15 minutes. Now we talk about contraindication of heparin. Number 1. Known heparin allergy. Patient with a known hypersensitivity or allergic reaction to heparin should not be received heparin as a part of their hemodialysis treatment. Number 2. Active bleeding or high bleeding risk. Patient with active bleeding, recent major surgery, significant trauma and other conditions that increase the risk of bleeding should avoid heparin. Third, thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia refer to a low platelet count in blood. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia HIT, is a potent serious complication that occur in some patients exposed to heparin. But thrombocytopenia can be a condition in other diseases also. Number 4. Recent intracranial hemorrhage. Patient with recent history of intracranial hemorrhage are at risk of bleeding complication if we use heparin. Number 5. Other medical conditions. Patient with certain medical conditions such as gastric ulcer, recent cellular vascular events or bacterial endocarditis may need to carefully consider before using heparin due to potent interaction and risk. There are some side effects of heparin. Number 1 bleeding. Number 2 thrombocytopenia or we can call it heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Hypersensitivity reactions, reversal alopecia, hair loss or osteopenia. Now we talk about the differences between normal heparin and low molecular weight heparin. The average molecular weight of heparin is 15,000 Dalton. If we talk about low molecular weight heparin, the molecular weight is 4,500 Dalton. We have to give less frequent dosing because low molecular weight heparin is having longer half-life. There is less risk of bleeding and heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Less risk of osteoporosis with long-term usage. There is one drawback with low molecular weight heparin that is 
low molecular weight heparin is expensive then compared to unfractionated heparin now we talk about some contraindication of low molecular weight heparin number 1 that can be allergies number 2 patient with heparin induced thrombocytopenia number 3 patient with bleeding disorders patients going for spinal anesthesia now we talk about some side effects of low molecular weight heparin number 1 bleeding number 2 allergic reaction number 3 injection site reaction such as redness irritation because we always give low molecular weight heparin by subcutaneous route number 4 heparin induced thrombocytopenia now there are some key points that you should always remember when you are using heparin number 1 staff should ensure the patient conditions before using using any anticoagulant therapy number 2 heparin is used according to the patient's body weight number 3 a heparin vial is a multi vial dose so after using the heparin vial cover it and mention the date of opening in case after dialysis patient is having any bleeding immediately contact your physician or nephrologist i hope I have solved your questions regarding anticoagulant therapy in dialysis and heparin doses. Now, I have a question for you. Patient 65 year old with end stage renal disease on hemodialysis thrice a week. He have a history of recent GI bleeding disorder due to peptic ulcer disease. So, what all precautions we have to take while giving him anticoagulant therapy? Please answer me in comment box. If you have any doubt regarding this video or you have any question, you can always connect with the DCDC Kidney Care Clinical Team. Thank you.